Susan's Spar. And I promised you a video about framing, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to give you a little demonstration on how to put a 9 by 12 uh, painting, and that could be any kind of a uh, 9 by 12 canvas, or it could be any size canvas, it doesn't have to be a 9 by 12, into a frame that is, of course, sized for a 9 by 12 canvas. Um, this is my canvas. I'm just going to use a blank one for, uh, for this demonstration. And I have a simple frame here. It's a plein air frame, as you can see. And I'll be mounting that. So let's get started. So here I'm going to take our 9 by 12 canvas and I'm going to just drop it right into the back of the frame. Before I can do anything, I want to mark off the edges of the frame. Now you can see just a little bit of the edge of the um, canvas poking up on the back of the frame, and that's good. We want that in this particular case. Now there are cases where your painting will be flush with the edge of the frame, and in those cases you're going to want to use a slightly different approach. But anytime your canvas pokes up a little bit behind the frame, that actually does make it a little easier to use this method to put it together. So I'm going to show you what I do. The first thing I do is I take a pen, and that could be any kind of pen, any kind of marking pen will do, but a fine point is best. And I'm going to mark the edges all the way around the canvas with the pen. And this is going to mark off where I want to imp where I want to put my screw eyes because that's what we're going to use to frame this painting. So as you can see, there is a nice little line that I've drawn around all four sides of my canvas. And we're going to use that as a guideline to secure it with screw eyes. Every, and I'm, I have here some number 212 screw eyes. Uh, you can see these are by Everbuilt. You can use slightly larger ones uh, or smaller ones, it doesn't matter, as long as they will fit with a half inch screw. These are number six half inch screws that I've picked up from Home Depot. You can get these at any hardware store. They will sit very nicely within the screw eye. So you can see that that screw, that little half inch screw, will fit very nicely and neatly inside a screw eye. It will do the same for slightly larger ones as well. I have one here that I can demonstrate with. This one has a little paint on it, but it'll give you a good view of how that works. Okay, so using my screwdriver, I use a little bit of a, a starter screw, and this is just a multi-purpose screw with a really sharp point. I use this to get my holes started and I just use a little ratchet driver. I've got one as you can see already secured here. I'm going to do another one for you as a demo. And what I do is I start a little screw hole so it'll make it easier for me to pull that, put the uh, screw eye into the canvas. Now I'm going to take one of those screw eyes and I've got a hole already started. This is really easy to do. All you need to do is get it started. You can do this either with your fingers. I sometimes will take a screwdriver or some other tool and put it through the end. This is a slightly smaller screw eye than the other ones I have here. But what you see now is all I need to do is drop the frame into place. So here I am. I'm screwing um, a little hole. I'm making a little starter hole with the use of this multi-purpose, very sharp screw. I'm going to pull it out now, and that's left me just a little bit of a hole to take one of these little half-inch screws now and very easily secure the canvas to the frame. I'm going to do this only in two places just so you can see how, how nice and secure it is, but I'm not going to do all sides because I don't want to bore you to death with that. 
Again, we're doing a little starter hole here. I normally put two screws on each side so that you end up with eight screw eyes and eight screws on every canvas and that um, gives you a very secure hole. Now this will work with any size canvas that you have um, and it doesn't have to be a canvas, it could be any kind of a substrate that artists use. I sometimes use boards but they're often cradled with strips of wood just like a canvas that often come up a little bit beyond and above the edge of the frame. So this is a very, very secure method of, of putting your painting in your frame. It will never come out. Um, it will stay there forever until you remove it. This method was taught to me by a friend of mine who used to do framing for the Museum of Art. I think it was the Los Angeles Museum of Art, and he showed me how to do this. So. As you can see, it's, and this is only two screws, it's quite secure. That's not coming out, it's not going anywhere. And it's nice and firmly and safely secured in the frame. Okay, so we've talked about how you can secure your canvas inside a frame when they are not flush, when the canvas is jutting up just a little bit beyond the edge of the frame. But well, what happens when your canvas is 100% flush with the edge of your frame? Then it makes it a little bit more difficult. Well, they do sell tools for this online and in lots of frame stores that, where you can uh, find things to secure your canvas to your frame. But a lot of us don't always have time or we're in a hurry or we want to just get that darn picture up on the wall. These are little mirror divots. I'm not quite sure what they're called, but you can find them at Home Depot. I'm going to hold this really close. Can you see that? Is that coming clear on our camera? Yes? Good. Okay. Um, and by simply screwing those in, I'm going to use a hole I've already drilled for the sake of expediency. You can simply screw that into place, and as you can see, it will hold your canvas neatly, and if you would put six of these around the frame, or eight of these, I'm sorry, on, two on each side. That would very nicely hold your frame and you could easily uh, loosen the screw and then rotate these out of the way to replace the canvas with another canvas if you wanted to do so or to remove the canvas for any other purpose. Okay, so we've covered two areas, but now what do we do when you receive a painting that's been done on a panel? I paint a lot on panels. I prefer a hard surface to paint on. Um, many artists prefer canvas. I prefer a nice panel. And I usually cover these with linen. So uh, there's a painting on one side, and the other side will either be white or will be this color. This is MDF panel, which I get at Home Depot, and then I um, seal them to keep the tannins and other things and, and acids that are in the wood from seeping through into the work. Uh, but this, as you can tell, and we'll show you in just a minute, this would not be flush with the edge of the frame, nor would it be above the frame. This would sit within the frame. So I'm going to show you how I would secure that. Okay, so here we have a panel, which is also a 9 by 12 and I've dropped it into the frame, and you can see that it sits a good, looks like a good half inch almost, um, below the edge of the back of the frame. Now. There are lots of other tools you can use. You can use little L brackets, little brackets like this. This, are not the, this is not the right size for this. It's a little too shallow. As you can see, it doesn't quite reach the bottom of the frame. That's one way to do it, by placing a screw here and here. But the problem with this is that this panel is too thin to put a screw into. You can't do that uh, without damaging the painting on the other side. So you're really going to need a framing tool for this. The framing tool that I use is rather inexpensive. These cost only about, um, they cost less than $50. There are ones that you can buy for 100 but this one is uh, less than 50 and you can find it online. It's made by Fletcher and uh, you can see it's, it's a simple tool. You can adjust the edges here or the little tool here to hug the frame. 
You always want to leave a little bit of a space so that you have room to contract the tool. It has a little magnet on the end and I just use some nail studs to do this. Quite simple. You can just, and for a box, will last you years. So I have some nail studs for, that would be used for a nail gun. And all I'm going to do is place this tool down and by simply compressing it this way, you have to push down on this end. It shoves the little dart into the edge of the little nail brad into the edge of the frame. You can also back the, the rear of your frame with paper. Heavy construction paper is often used to seal the back of it uh, so that we don't get dust inside the frame or the canvas. If your canvas is sticking up out uh, past the edge of your frame, that makes it a little awkward and so in those cases we generally don't cover the backs of the painting. But then we need to hang it, so we need to hang it with wire. And uh, this is just regular picture wire. I think it's 40. It's for uh, 40 gauge, meaning it would it would hold about a 40. It could hold up to 40 pounds um, in terms of a painting. You don't need anything that quite that heavy for a painting of this size. I usually, when I order my frames and I order them online, order hanging hardware. This is the hanging hardware that comes with my frames when I order them from my wholesale places. You can buy these um, in hardware stores. You can buy them online as picture hanging hardware. It's fairly simple to do. These are generally secured about one third of the distance down on the frame. So about this point here. I've got a hole here already. This is a little bit less than one third, but I'm going to use the hole I've already got here just as an example on how this is done. I want to flip this around so it faces the other side. I use a ruler to measure generally how far down it goes. In this case, uh, from the edge of my frame down to about one, two, three, four, five inches. And I would mark off that same amount on the other side. Stringing the wire through the hardware is relatively simple. You simply pull it through once, bring it around, twist it as such, and then send it back through again. Okay. Now that's kind of hard to see from where you are. When you get it up on the other side, then you just twist it. And I'm sure you've all seen this done before. I like to make mine very tight, and I often use a little piece of rubber or plastic to cover the rough ends of the wire. You can also get a crimping tool. I don't have one of those to show you, but they're relatively inexpensive, and you can buy one online. You might even be able to get one at the hardware store, although I'm not sure about that. But I usually put a little piece of rubber hosing or pl plastic hosing right over the edge of this. I string it on, and that covers it. And that shows you how to secure your wire. You really want to pull these tight because they are going to get slack as time goes by anyway. So you don't want to give it slack. You want to make it as tight as you can. It will find its own slack over time. And that's that. So that's it for a little bit of a framing lesson. I get my frames, and I'm not getting any kickbacks on this, but I really like these folks. I get my frames from webpictureframe.com. So go to webpictureframe.com and you can get practically wholesale prices for a lot of the frames they have on that site. They're very good frames. I frame only with good frames. And um, I really like these folks because they can give you any size you want and there's really no great extra charge for that. You can have them cut to whatever odd size you want and they'll ship it right out. Thanks for watching this video and thanks for subscribing to my newsletter. See you in two months.